It feels like it was just yesterday, but it was actually nearly eight months ago when the entire world came together to respectfully mourn the passing of Elizabeth II. Mm. Not just the UK's queen, but really the world's queen. The whole earth wept. And there was absolutely nothing weird about it. Mm. Nothing cult-like or outdated or eerily reminiscent of how the Kim family is treated in North Korea. Canceling all public events so that the public can line up on the street for days just to get a brief glimpse at a coffin is just something that normal people do when someone they've never met dies at the ripe age of 96. Quite literally filling their diapers as the queen's coffin passes. I can't think of a more respectful way it's the to least honor that the they dead could do. than to have a fully loaded diaper while you salute and cry over the queen's corpse. Sometimes showing respect requires sacrifice, and yeah. sometimes that means poop it into an adult diaper so that you don't lose your place uh, seeing the queen's coffin uh, whiz by on the street. Whiz. And, uh, yeah. So, I mean, listen, have some goddamn respect. I know a lot of you people watching this, you're like, oh, these British, what freaks. No, have some fucking respect, all right? <laughs> <laughs> okay, but seriously, uh, yeah, that that whole thing with the Queen, that was fucking weird, right? Yeah, it was very weird. And, uh, uh-oh, they're kind of doing it again. The UK is back on its bullshit, yeah, folks. It is shoving its way into <laughs> the, the worldwide attention span. Let's and saying, go. All eyes on us. We're about to do something stupid. Yeah. <laughs> uh, by the time this episode goes up, it will have already happened. And we're going to assume everything went as planned. Though it would be funny if it didn't. But yeah, despite Charles immediately assuming the throne as king once his mother died back in September, he had to cry for a little bit. We had to give him some room. The, the period of uh, princely mourning. Yes. Uh, yeah, of, of course, there are ancient traditions here and they must be honored and respected. The most important of which is the coronation of Britain's new monarch. This doesn't happen often. The last time was 70 years ago. So the people of the United Kingdom are, of course, very excited about all of this. All right, well, maybe not everyone. Certainly not everyone up in Glasgow, as you can see. <laughs> yeah. But I guess uh, up there, they're still a little bit sore about having the Stone of Destiny stolen by Edward I back in 1296. Nefarious Edward I. Which, uh, yeah, the Stone of Destiny, that's what it's called. It's, it's just one of the many ridiculous and bizarre items that will be part of this historic ceremony. And we will explain the Stone of Destiny in a moment. Uh, but yeah, I mean, if, if you're British and this coronation stuff is really important to you, um, we're sorry. We live in an absolute hellhole over here. We know. Nothing you say can hurt us. Mm -hmm. But it's nice to be reminded every once in a while that this country has, in fact, done a small handful of things correctly just a few times. And one of which was declaring independence from the British and getting rid of all this fucking RPG bullshit. Yeah. Or at least most of it. Um... There's, there's definitely elements of it. Uh, <laughs> yeah. But most of it. They got rid of the, the most... Uh... The American version of this is when Donald Trump had uh, uh, the police force tear gas protesters so that he could hold a Bible in front of that church. As is tradition. Yes, that was the American version of what you're seeing in Great Britain. And the entire design of Washington, D.C., which is uh, intentionally made to look like it's from ancient Greece and not the 1800s. We do need to bring back the wigs. Uh, no. <laughs> no, they use them over in England, and it's it's real fucking funny. It's like, I, they, like imagine if any of the, like, the O.J. Simpson trial, the, the all the lawyers and judges had fucking At least ten times powdered funnier. wigs on. Yeah, yeah, I guess. Turns out, though, plenty of Americans clearly yearn for a return to royal subjugation. Like this lady from Connecticut who has traveled to London for every major British royal celebration since the late 80s, and who is currently camped on the street like a bum with thousands of other people just like, so she might get a glimpse of King Charles' carriage passing by. Uh, she seems like a nice enough lady, but what the fuck? What are you doing? Filling her diapers. Go to fucking, like... She I, she probably has at least once gone to Times Square. Go to Hawaii. Go to go somewhere nice. What are you doing? Why are you going to England so much? Anglia files. 
Yeah, it, they're the weirdest. I mean, I, and I guess we are kind of, in a lot of ways, an Anglophile channel. We cover a lot of we this do. British stuff. But we cover it not because we like it, but because we are morbidly fascinated by it. Like last week, Arthur Knight. Yeah, yes. That yeah. was, that's like the the perfect British story we for ex us. Not exported him, but he exported himself from the United States. Right. I like, you know, looking and mocking England because it takes attention away from America for a brief moment. Yeah, and there's also, a lot of bad stuff going on here. So we can, if we can laugh. Also, don't come at us, cause like with everything, we learned it from you, Dad. And we, also, there would be no America without Britain. Also, uh, lovely people. Uh, the people who aren't completely, uh, mostly. Uh, uh, you know, royalty pilled are all very nice. Yeah, a lot of uh, real wide range of uh, <laughs> of. Uh, there's a lot of different classes of, of British people, and most of them are are chill and don't care about this stuff. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. But there's definitely a lot that do care about it, and they're fucking freaks. But uh, speaking of caring about it a lot, let's get back to the Stone of <laughs> the Destiny. The Stone of Destiny! Yeah! It's but one of many items from The Witcher and Elder Scrolls games that are invo involved in this ceremony. <laughs> uh, and The Guardian very helpfully published an article listing off all of the items, and it reads like your inventory in any RPG. Yeah. You're saving these for no reason. Just give them to the local merchant and get your gold. Yeah, for some of these, you are going to have to buy the NFT from Ubisoft. Yes. Um, but, you know, bragging rights. Is Boris Johnson going to enchant these items in front of the whole crowd? Well, thankfully, Boris... I mean, I guess he still has his job, but he's not in any official capacity. I Actually, don't, I don't he think was just involved. pulled over in uh, Holland, uh, and he was driving with a license that said it expired in the year 3000. What? No, someone was driving with a <laughs> fake license that said they were Boris Johnson with oh. his photo, and it expired in the I, year 3000. I, I, I wouldn't put it past him. Yeah, he rides a bike, buddy. Well, yeah. anyway, here's the Guardian. A controversial inclusion in the coronation ceremony. For more than 700 years, the stone on which Scottish kings have been crowned for centuries was seized from Scone Abbey. Delicious. By the English king Edward I in 1296. He commissioned a wooden coronation chair to enclose it. Charles III will become the 27th monarch to sit on it. The 150 kilogram block of red sandstone was bombed by suffragettes in 1914 and briefly captured by Scottish nationalists in 1950. But it wasn't until 1996 that it was finally returned to Edinburgh. This time, the coronation liturgy pointedly states it has been lent with the consent of the Scottish government and people. So it must be it must be a really cool, uh, fancy stone, right? This uh, I can't wait to see what the stone of destiny looks like. It must be beautiful. I just want to add quickly that the royal family has the option to do the funniest thing possible right now, which is not give this back. No, give back these. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, this would all make sense a little bit if the Stone of Destiny didn't look like just a random piece of debris from a parking structure demolition. It literally has what looks like a piece of rebar sticking out of it. Yeah, it's like, <laughs> oh, th oh, that? <laughs> cool. My destiny sucks. Yeah. <laughs> maybe, okay, maybe it's like the Emperor's new clothes and it only looks bad to us because we have, uh, you know, our lives are failures. And only the royal family can gaze upon its glory. Well, I mean, and also the full force. Uh, not to be mean, but the beauty standards over there are a bit different than ours. So, <laughs> <laughs> woo! Well, uh, the last two British people just dropped off the channel. <laughs> bye bye. Uh, so yeah, maybe it did seem a bit more fancy 800 years ago when a big flat rock was the most comfortable chair in all the land. <laughs> this Look at that thing. This chair won't rot. Yeah. <laughs> But uh, like they said, The Rock was given back to Scotland in the 90s, and they are lending it out for this occasion. And they <laughs> even had a televised ceremony up in Scotland with a bunch of people carrying out of Edinburgh Castle, flanked by bagpipe players. It's just so fucking absurd to have this big fancy ceremony and like six people like pallbearers carrying just a random ass fucking rock. Yeah. Charles better make sure this stone gets back in a timely manner or... Yeah. Something really funny is going to happen. I mean, every couple years, the Scots do start uh, do start talking about maybe seceding, and uh, this is a great bargaining chip to yeah. keep them in the realm. So, The royal family we'll has the chance to do something very funny. They do. Yeah. Just like the old days. If you want people to start caring about the monarchy again, you got to do some monarchy shit, which is inevitably just cruelty. Uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, because it'll really separate the loyalists yeah. and everyone else, every normal person. Yeah, like what is even the point of having a royal family if they're not going to just exploit 
uh, the the common foe. I'll do an impersonation of the two. Uh, the royal uh, loyalist. Ooh, <laughs> that type of British person. Yeah. Regular great British people. Oi! Oi, my lord. My lord, where we... <laughs> my lord, is that a stone of destiny? <laughs> Oi! But yeah, the stone is merely one of the items that the British royals have uh, earned over the centuries through grinding XP and always purchasing the battle pass. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Uh, and buying all the DLCs. Uh, most of these items are very rare. Yeah, they, they uh, did the thing where you get like the 15 free levels by paying a little extra. Yeah, and they also they got really lucky at uh, the sort of slot machine mechanic <laughs> that was briefly introduced and then taken No away. rerolls. Yeah. This, one, this stone is perfect. Uh, but yeah, Charles' inventory includes not one but two royal scepters. Cool. One of which contains the largest clear-cut diamond in the world, which I'm sure was obtained <laughs> ethically. Yeah. And uh, no one... Uh, is angry about the fact that it's just sitting at the end of this stick and gets pulled out like once every couple of years. It, I'm sure that's just totally fine with everyone. Absolutely hilarious, the asterisk that comes with any of these items. Ooh, yeah, <laughs> just everything in their inventory has claims upon them by former What, you can't even have the world's largest diamond in a gold scepter anymore? Yeah, uh, yeah, this, this has a diamond like the size of a fist. Um, but that's just one of the scepters. He's also got, you know, another one, a backup. Yeah. Uh, and, and also two more scepters for uh, your new queen, Camilla. Queen Camilla. I, I love people are, are, are now claiming that uh, it is poor weather over there now because Diana is looking down and just pissing all over this thing. Yeah, Diana water sports happening right now. <laughs> yeah. And yeah, Charles will have his hands full with not just the scepter, because he'll also be holding the Sovereign's Orb! Oh! Which is, uh, it's just kind of a big ball made out of gold and covered in a bunch of jewels. You, you, and you hold it, and yeah. uh, you look royal. You don't understand, that is a handheld item that increases the stats on the one, uh, one-handed uh, yeah. scepter. Yeah, that's right. It, it, it's just a stat boost. Your melee speed goes to like 150 plus. Uh, yeah, exactly. Your HP goes up, mana is increased. Yeah, and mm -hmm. you, you have you access to better combos. <laughs> Sure. Uh, now, of course, with all of these priceless items on display, Charles may need to defend himself from thieves. So, of course, he will be bringing along some swords. <laughs> and not the swords you're thinking of that you got down at the mall. No. No, sir. No, no, no. Not some fucking katana that's going to break the second you try to actually use it. Nope. He'll have the sword of state, the sword of mercy, the sword of spiritual justice, the sword of temporal justice, <laughs> and the Jeweled Sword of Offering, thusly named due to all the jewels. Um, yeah, you hopefully can... he doesn't get these confused because they all have different, very specific powers. Right, yeah. I mean, you can tell... The Jeweled Sword, you can tell what it, how it is by yeah. the way it is. Yeah. Because <laughs> of all the jewels. Yeah, look how it is. It's yeah, that You can tell that's the one. But um, I, would, I would not like to be on the receiving end of a mistake between the Sword of Mercy and the Sword of Justice. Yeah. That's like the stun gun and they the actual each pistol other out. Uh, yeah. on a cop. Like, yeah, it's, I mean, like, if you thought it was confusing in, like, The Witcher to have a silver sword for creatures and an iron sword for humans, like, Charles has five swords on him. <laughs> Now I'm no, I am know where all of this inventory management is coming from because there's some serious inventory management yeah. going on here. All, all your favorite uh, swords and fantasy games are based on real life. And yeah. Specifically based on the British uh, royalty. And when he, when he grabs something new from the crowd, he has to trash it or make room for it in his inventory. Yeah, there's going to be multiple points in the coronation where he has to like empty his pockets. And sir, like... sir, I brought you something all the way from the great state of Ohio. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. Cool. <laughs> trash. Uh, so yeah, <laughs> but, but yeah. At some point, uh, someone from the Church of England is going to be holding a cross that contains pieces of the actual cross that Jesus died on. For real, guys, it's the cross. This has uh, to be the last time anyone ever does a coronation. Like, there's no way that it, putting up with it now is aggressive. <laughs> like, yeah. putting up with it with it uh, in the future is going to be uh, just. Offensive, but like, yeah, this is another another thing. Like, one of the few things America got right is that at least the nominal separation of church and state to the point where, uh, yeah, carrying a, a, an officially licensed piece of the actual true Jesus cross yeah. into the, like the Senate would be a a, a slight problem. They do bring uh, in Lincoln's Bible. Yeah, that's true, but yeah. it's it's more about the Lincoln than. Exactly. I guess, I guess it's pretty. It depends on who you ask, but yeah, uh, yeah so it's it's the the piece of the true cross, or at least. The cross Jesus supposedly died on, because, yeah. I don't know, like these relics, they're just sort of accepted at face value despite their well, dubious origins. It's a whole trade of the relic world. We know that this one is real because uh, the royal family bought it from Hobby Lobby. Uh, no, actually. 
No, actually. Yeah. What's crazy is that these pieces of the True Cross were offered, gifted oh. to Charles by the Vatican. Wow. Francis, what the fuck are you doing? 500 years ago, these inbred freaks told the Vatican <laughs> to kick rocks. They said, we don't need you anymore. So uh, all just so that one of them could get divorced. The, the lamest reason. And now you're gifting them pieces of the cross? A real pope would have sent an army of mercenaries to do something about these pretenders to the faith. Yeah. But not you. So yeah, the Catholic Church clearly gone woke. This yeah. is bullshit. Well, hopefully they, they still maintain the tablets of Gilgamesh from Hobby Lobby. And uh, that way... You know, add that to the inventory, and we'll be all good. Also, like, anyone from America who is, like, super into this shit, just join the Catholic Church. It's all the same. It's Yeah, yeah. if you want all this <laughs> freak shit, this yeah, is, like, 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 weird history freak shit. Yeah, like, if, if, if there are Americans who are into this British royal nonsense and are, like, Protestants or evangelicals, like, that makes no sense to me. There is a church designed for you. It's yeah. got incense and relics and, and you can, everyone's you, wearing like seven layers of clothing and there's scepters and incense. Brush off any criticism by saying the simple term, nobody can hate me more than I hate myself. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's the Catholic That's the way. Catholic motto. Yeah. Anyways, old Chuck is going to be dressed to the nines, of course. He'll be wearing his coronation best, which includes two golden bracelets, the bracelet of sincerity <laughs> and the bracelet of wisdom. <laughs> oh! <laughs> Too many bracelets, not enough stew, as Adam Carolla would say. Uh, actually, wait, he, he doesn't actually wear the bracelets of sincerity and wisdom. He just kind of looks at them at one point, and then they put them somewhere else. The bracelets have been acknowledged, as is tradition, and yes. now the bracelets will go away. Yes. Normally, a regent of the... Uh, a royal wears the bracelets, but Charles is known to have uh, limbs and uh, appendages that are very weirdly sausage-like. You can tell I'm the king because of all the jewels. <laughs> like, I wonder if there was supposed to be like oh, yeah. putting on rings, and he's just like, no, no, no rings. No more rings. No my rings. Fi my fingers are sausages already. Yeah, you're, you're not going to be able to get it off. Uh, when the queen died, we mentioned it because all the photos were coming out, the, the, the more recent photos of him. It looks like his existence is painful. Yeah, he doesn't seem happy about any of this. No, like, it looks like if you if you pricked his finger, that it would explode and shoot his arm around. Yeah. Which, uh, yeah. Anyways, as for the clothes that he'll be wearing and not just looking at, well, Versace and uh, no. Cartier. No. And That wouldn't be traditional. Yeah. And those are foreign brands. This is a British no, affair. The, the Italians sent those as well. Oh, did they? Yeah, some Dolce & Gabbana, okay. some uh, Louis Vuitton. For the man that has everything. <laughs> Here's the Guardian again about what he'll actually be wearing. After the moment of coronation, Charles will put on a plain white linen shift tunic called the Colobium Sindonis, this one worn by George VI in 1937. Over it will be placed George V's super tunica, a dazzling full-length sleeved gold coat, which is fastened with the coronation sword belt. It is covered, finally, by the imperial mantle, made of cloth of gold and woven with a pattern of roses, thistles, shamrocks, crowns, eagles, and fleur-de-lis. He also has a single coronation glove, which is put on at one point and then taken off again. There's a reason they took so many wives back in the day. These guys would be virgins otherwise. Super tunic. I mean, they got a lot of jewels. And yeah. chicks love jewels. They sure, yeah, they do. They do. Uh, oh, and uh, then there's the crowns. Plural. Multiple crowns. Yes. During the coronation, he puts on the St. Edward's crown, the one you always see in pictures, which is solid gold and contains over 400 <laughs> jewels acquired through perfectly yeah. on-the-level means. Uh, it weighs five pounds, so they pretty much only ever wear it at coronations. Uh, once that's over, though, he'll put on the Imperial State Crown, which weighs half as much but contains over 3,000 individual jewels. And both of these are just sort of kept in a locker 90% of the time. Just so you have them. I am offended by this entire ceremony. Yeah, no, this is... And, like, especially right now, um, I haven't checked in too much, but I, from what I understand, life for the average British citizen these days isn't exactly great. No, they're dealing uh, with the same types of inflation <laughs> yeah. and uh, economical and socio-economical problems as we are yeah. uh, in, in a majority of cases. So, yes, flaunting this is very strange. Yeah, you take away the, like, traditional aspect of this, and this is just the most garish fucking display of uh, wealth imaginable. Yes. At a time when uh, people are struggling from the sound of it, um, and also voting with their wallets because uh, the Tory party is pfft, just fucking ate shit in the local elections, which is good, but I'm not going to put too much faith in the average British voter. <sighs> voter. Uh, they, they love that shit. 
Nigel Farage will buy a bus and he'll start driving it around talking about how good it is that yeah. uh, King Charles has all the jewels. But let's talk about the most important part of any coronation. Uh, here's the Guardian again. The chrism oil. <laughs> chrism. Chrism. <laughs> <laughs> the chrism oil, the most sacred religious aspect of the ceremony, is the anointing, or unction, oh. of the monarch with holy oil, which was consciously adopted by English monarchs more than a millennium ago to emulate the kings of the Old Testament. For the first time, the oil, scented with sesame, rose, jasmine, cinnamon, neroli, benzoin, amber, and orange blossom, has been blessed in Jerusalem in tribute to the king's paternal grandmother, the mother of Prince Philip, who is buried nearby. Keep an eye out for the coronation spoon <laughs> used for the anointing. It is the only ancient survivor of the medieval coronation regalia, which dates from the 12th century. It sounds like cum, for the name alone. Chrism. <laughs> oh, sir, you have some chrism, chrism on, your, uh, on your coat there. Mm, chrism. Just take the one tunic off. You have another. And also, oh, they, the, the chrism, the craziest part of the chrism is uh, no one can see that. Uh, there is the, the a special, uh, the screen of privacy is placed in front. So no one can see Charles getting the chrism. So no one actually knows exactly what happens with the chrism. The chrism is stored in the balls. <laughs> yeah, what are they doing with that chrism? They, they, I mean, I would, you would assume on the forehead, but if it was just that, why are they hiding behind the, the screen of modesty? <laughs> uh, anyways, they're actually breaking from tradition with this chrism one. <laughs> chrism. Chrism oil. It's surprising more people aren't pissed off about that, but it's not supposed to be vegan. Oh, God. Uh-oh. The chrism oil previously contained excretions from the gooch of civets, as well as whale puke, and they, they've just done away with that, just as they've done away with the traditional coronation pie and replaced it with something less repellent. Uh, the royal family has clearly gone woke. Yeah, this is bullshit. Uh, Fox is no longer going to be carrying this the coronation This line. has got to be all Camilla's doing, because a true royal would never, uh, you know, break with tradition on... Um, you know, the, the chrism and yes. and the coronation pie. Is Harry attending? Uh, yeah, but not Meghan. Okay, well, there was probably, this is probably one of the concessions that allowed Harry to be there. Okay. Can we do without the, the, the whale vomit? Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, the coronation pie, which per tradition is presented to the new monarch by the city of Gloucester, used to be a lamprey pie. Oh, what's a lamprey, you ask? Oh, just one of the most horrifying sea creatures on Earth. Basically, the inspiration for both the sandworms from Dune and the concept of a vagina dentata. Yeah, this is a, this animal's a real freak. They're the ones that suck onto the sharks and stuff, right? Yeah. Yeah, I, I put one on my chest once. Their we're... mouth, if you look in it, it is, it's like looking into the depths of hell. Okay, I didn't use that one. There's one that has like a sucker on its back of its head or no, something. No, this one, it's like, it's like a, just a, a ring, a cylinder of teeth. Hmm. Uh, they used to bake pies, uh, bake these abominations into a pie as a treat, but they switched to pork. Yeah, uh, it's a kind of end of an era because, you know, the British, they love to put um, fish in pies and like somehow like even have the fish like sticking out of the pie. Yeah. To remind you that there it, is. Because it looks like a crown. Yeah, I guess. Um, and yeah, now these these weird, uh, these body horror, uh, these lampreys, no more lampreys in the pie eating Eating pork? Come on. Mm -hmm. Come on. You gone woke. Anyway, some other fun coronation facts for you before we finally fucking move on from this shit forever. Uh, the UK government is shelling out eight million pounds of taxpayer money to send out official portraits of King Charles to uh, schools, police stations, fire stations, and other public buildings so that no one ever forgets about him. Ever. Very important. Uh, following the coronation, every fucking church bell in the country is going to be ringing nonstop for three fucking hours as is tradition, and they had to solicit 8,000 civilian volunteers in order to be able to ring that many bells at once for that long. And of course, like the good serfs that they are, uh, the volunteers filled up quickly. Of course. Just want to be a part of history. Yes. Is Big Ben going to be going that long? I think probably. What an annoying place to be. Yeah, no. Uh, I feel bad for every dog in the United Kingdom that has to deal with this. <laughs> and every person, but mostly every dog. Yeah. So. Animals didn't have a choice. They had no choice. No. Anyways, it's probably already happened, so we hope that everything went off without a hitch, and we hope that Tom Cruise and Winnie the Pooh had a great time doing whatever the hell it is that they were doing there. I believe Nick Cave made a point to attend as well. What? That's, yeah. That, that doesn't seem like him. Yeah, I know. Uh, if yeah. anything actually noteworthy happened, we'll probably talk about it on Monday. Uh, but if not, 
Let's give a fond farewell to ever having to talk about any of this shit ever again, or at least until Charles dies, which for the sake of the Walt Disney Company, hopefully isn't for a very, very long yeah, time, or Reedy well, Creek is going to hell. Charles' lineage, may it, may it last long. And the way yeah. those extremities look, I am not quite sure. Yeah, no, that's that's what's fucked out of, fucked up about this is Elizabeth lived so long that now like you didn't have a coronation or a royal funeral for like more than half a century and now like might have to do this whole song and dance again in like 5 to 10 years. Yeah, I mean, historically, uh, women do live longer than men, so Charles's days are numbered anyway. Yeah. Just through the natural being of man. But for now, it's Charles in charge. Yes. Yes, We're it put is. put a picture of him on every wall and also a picture of his fucked up hands. Yeah, as a warning. This is what a normal hand looks like. Your hands are the ones that are weird. This is what happens when you have too much lamprey pie. Yeah. Yeah. But <laughs> let's switch gears now by taking a look at what's going on elsewhere in the Commonwealth. Up in Canada, they've got a lot of the same problems that we have down here in the U.S. Well, obviously not the gun problem. And we're not even going to attempt to understand what that might be, but uh, they do have a fentanyl problem. Yeah. I don't know how they solve guns, but I'm not going to look into it. Yeah. Could be anything. Yeah. yeah. Who's to say? They do have a fentanyl problem, though, and we have to constantly remind everyone the real dangers of fentanyl have less to do with pure concentrated fentanyl powder and much more to do with fentanyl contaminating other illicit drugs unbeknownst to the users. Fentanyl testing strips are the best way to avoid accidentally taking fentanyl and ready and uh, available access to Narcan, which is getting better. I've seen it in stores ready to go. Yeah, yeah. depends on where you live. Some places you can't even get testing strips because they're like, well, why would you want to do that? You might be doing some illicit drugs. But uh, one man in Canada is taking a different approach into uh, taking away the possibility of cross-contamination. Here's Vice. The Vancouver man who opened a store selling heroin, meth, cocaine, and MDMA was arrested less than 24 hours after launching the business. Jerry Martin opened The Drug Store, a mobile shop, in the downtown east side Wednesday, a neighborhood that's been ravaged by the overdose epidemic. He said he wanted to give people a safe supply of drugs that have been tested to ensure they didn't contain fentanyl. Vancouver police said Thursday they arrested a man for drug trafficking in connection with an illicit drug dispensary that began operating yesterday in the downtown east side. Police said they started gathering evidence after the suspect started selling cocaine, crack, methamphetamine, and heroin out of a mobile trailer parked near Main and Cordova streets. The store, which was parked next to a police van, had bright yellow sandwich boards featuring a price list for all the drugs, which ranged from $10 for a point, one-tenth of a gram, of meth, to $250 for 2.5 grams of crack. Martin, who wore a stab-proof vest as he sold drugs from behind a plexiglass window inside the shop, said he wanted to stay close to street prices. Hmm. And yeah, the pictures of this pop-up drug shop are pretty wild. Step right up! Step right up and get your drugs! We've got cocaine! Crack, we've got heroin, we've got meth, we've got ecstasy. Clean, pure, uncut, guaranteed. And that's not a joke, that's literally, like, you go back 100 years and that was that was reality. Pretty much, yeah. I'd like some cocaine, please. Pure. Yeah. I need a, a little bit of heroin to, uh, i got some gum problems. I'm going to put some heroin on the gums and well, sleep go. tight. Here you go, have a good one. Anyways, yeah, this guy totally did this specifically to get arrested and prove a point. And the point he's trying to make is that legal access to clean and tested drugs would go a long way towards reducing harm. This is obviously a controversial stance, but he plans on using his arrest to mount a legal challenge against drug prohibition, with his lawyer saying he would allege that laws that prevent a safe supply and result in death by poisoning contravene Section 7 of the Charter of Rights and Freedoms and must be struck down. Interesting. So, uh, yeah. good luck to them. But, point uh, taken. And made international news, so... Yeah, hell of a stunt. Yeah. And for a lucky few... A hell of a day, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Damn, some good shit. Yeah. And uh, anyway, that's it for the main part of the show. Mm-hmm. We do have the headlines half of the show coming up uh, with no British news. Are you sure? I think so. Okay, good. But first, a word from this week's sponsor, Green Chef. Green Chef is a CCOF certified meal kit company. Green Chef makes eating well easy with plans to fit every lifestyle, whether you're keto, paleo, vegan, vegetarian, gluten-free, 
or just looking to eat more balanced meals, Green Chef offers a range of recipes to suit your preferences. Fill up with Protein Packed, Green Chef's newest collection of recipes fit for a high protein dietary preference. Choose from three weekly menu items, each including a, at least 40 grams of protein per serving. You can expect a variety of satisfying and flavorful recipes like Greek chicken salad with mint olive tapenade, enchilada spiced turkey bowls, and almond crusted barramundi. You can now choose from 50 plus weekly menu and market items with the option to mix and match meals from different dietary preferences in the same box without changing your plan, i.e. order vegan one day, keto the next. Make more time for exciting plans and new goals this spring with Green Chef's convenient, wholesome recipes. Try fast and fit recipes under 750 calories and ready in 25 minutes or less. Plus, cut down on meal prep with pre-portioned and prepped ingredients, including pre-measured sauces, spices, and dressings. Green Chef is owned by HelloFresh, which also sponsors this show, so with a wider variety of meal plans to choose from, there's something for everyone. We especially love Green Chef meals that are quick, easy, and don't require much cleanup. And on this week's menu, they've got the sesame ginger shrimp bowls with fried eggs, summer squash, and spicy ginger lime aioli. That's mm. gonna be a good one. Go to greenchef.com slash weird60 and use code weird60 to get 60% off plus free shipping. Again, that is 60% off plus free shipping by going to greenchef.com slash weird60 and using code weird60. And this episode is sponsored by Honey, the easy way to save when shopping on your iPhone or computer. We all shop online. We've all seen that promo code field taunting us at checkout. But thanks to Honey, manually searching for coupon codes is a thing of the past. Honey is the free shopping tool that scours the internet for promo codes and applies the best one it finds to your cart. Imagine you're shopping on one of your favorite sites. When you check out, the Honey button appears, and all you have to do is click Apply Coupons. You wait a few seconds as Honey searches for coupons it can find for that site. And if Honey finds a working coupon, you will watch your prices drop. Uh, recently, I, I told the story before, but I got some of those uh, uh, blue light cutting glasses. Uh, oh. But I had to—I I sprung for some nicer ones because uh, the cheap ones weren't cutting it. But luckily, Honey was able to get me 20% off the website that I visited, so it made it a little bit easier. And now I can drive with less distractions with those god awful headlights shining yeah. me in the face. I had to buy some shoes for as a gift for some. This fucking Filipino debutante thing that <laughs> my wife's uh, cousin was involved in, but it was uh, Honey made it a lot easier because uh, I and they don't have to know and they don't have to know. Mm -hmm. Yeah, saved saved actually like a pretty good amount of money on these shoes. Yeah. <laughs> Honey doesn't just work on desktop, it works on your iPhone too. Just activate it on Safari on your phone and save on the go. If you don't already have Honey, you could be straight up missing out. And by getting it, you'll be doing yourself a solid and supporting this show. We would never recommend something we don't use, so get PayPal Honey for free at joinhoney.com slash weird. That is joinhoney.com slash weird. All right, on to the craziest, most insane uh, headlines from around the world. Headlines that uh, tell the whole story, but uh, always still leave you asking I wonder what the first headline will be. hi -o. Crash yeah. unleashes one million bees onto Florida Highway. <laughs> There's an entire semi-truck full of bees. $40,000 worth of bees. I, I've never seen them assign a, a dollar amount to bees, but uh, yeah, a, a truckload of bees, $40,000. That's not nothing. Mm-hmm. And uh, I, I, I'm I, assuming that the driver knew what he was hauling and was very upset when he crashed. Yeah, well, they'd, I'm sure they'd be upset even if they didn't know what they were hauling. Or we have a Tommy Boy situation on our hands, and this was a way to not get in trouble with the authorities, because the authorities show up and they're like, "What's going on here? Some kind of some kind of accident?" Yeah. And everyone's running around. Everyone, look, pretend there's bees everywhere. Yeah. Ah, ah! And then the cops are like, "Wait, I'm allergic to bees. Let's get out of here." Yeah, the but perfect it, but crime. But in Tommy Boy, they pretended this was one million bees. For real. Yeah. Well, On the highway. Did they get that bee lady to show up with her queen? Um, I don't think so. Yeah, every time I see a bee story, I think of that TikTok bee lady. Yeah. And luckily, I had my own queen in my pocket. She just walks around with a, a spare queen. As you do. And um, yeah, her videos are fascinating. She just, uh, she just sort of picks those bees up, scoops them up. Yeah. Uh, beekeeper calming does, energy. does seem like a pretty cool job. You get your on call in case of a bee incident. I would assume that the bees were probably pretty upset by the violent crash that uh, yeah. sprung them loose. Also, they're in Florida. Very hot, very humid. Hot, humid. Just not good for bees. Not a good place for anyone, unless you're 90 years old. Yeah. Then it helps the skin. Speaking of bees, swarm of bees delays a Delta flight by three hours. Were these the same bees? Uh, maybe they got lost. I don't know. Yeah. Could be a different... Uh, All right. We finally got the bees back in the truck. Let's get them to the airport so we can ship them where they need to go. 
as fast as humanly possible <laughs> so there's no more accidents. Don't. Whoa! <laughs> yeah, I don't know where these bees came from, but they, they were covering one of the, like, the the wings yeah. of the plane, and I, like, I guess they're like, we can't take off with bees on it. We don't know what's going to happen. So they had to wait. I don't know how they ended up getting them off. The maybe, bee, la- the bee lady had it in her, the bee lady. her chucked luggage, and she forgot she put the queen bee in there, and then all of a sudden, the bees are like, wait, what the fuck? Where's the queen? Yeah. But they found her. Bees. Bees. Bee news. Lots of bee news this week. Because it's sponsored by Honey. Oh, <laughs> shit. Hey. Yeah, we love bees. They we should give honey. us extra for that. Passenger who missed flight makes bomb threat, forces evacuation at LAX, police say. This happens way more than you would assume it does. The one this time makes the least amount of sense, because usually when this happens, it's someone who's, like, going to miss their flight, so they want to delay their flight so they can catch it by calling in a bomb threat or whatever. Mm -hmm. But uh, in this case, the person missed their flight from Vegas to LA. Like, it was already gone. It was in the air. So then they they made in they made up some sort of bomb threat about like oh well my luggage is still on the plane and it's got a bomb in it so uh, I, you're gonna be real mad that I wasn't on the plane to just, I I don't know what the logic here was but it's just like okay uh, let's go straight to jail what the fuck are you doing yeah also just an extreme way to handle this I assume that like they missed their flight but like also didn't want they wanted an excuse to not be at work on time or something. <laughs> that, yeah, like, well, I'm locked in LAX right now. What are you going to do? There's a bomb threat. I, I, I can't make it in. Yeah, maybe they, they had a long weekend in yeah. Vegas and they're due back at work at 9 No, I'm not hungover. <laughs> no, it's nothing to do with that. I would love to be at work fresh and ready to go today. But unfortunately, there was a bomb on the plane. So You can't predict these things. I'm yeah, sorry. You yeah. know, it's, it's an act of God. Can you zoom in? Uh, Sure. Hey, what are those noises behind you at that airport? Uh, the airports don't have slot machines in Los Angeles. They should, though. Is that a smoking room behind you? <laughs> uh, next headline. Woman charged with faking her own abduction to hide fact that she dropped out of college, state police say. <laughs> Look, you got to hand it to the last two headlines. They get real creative in, in like, pretty yeah. average scenarios. Yeah, you know, desperate times call for uh, desperate measures. This one's especially crazy when you look into it, because, um, so yeah, obviously the end of the school year is coming up. This woman was about to graduate from college. Mm-hmm. Uh, but it turns out she literally attended one or two semesters back in 2018 <laughs> and has not been Well, there was a pandemic. That- Okay, but so she would be on her fifth year technically now. The last four years she has not been enrolled because they checked. Like this, this is how the police figured it out because they were like, uh, when they when this girl was reported missing, they went they reached out to the university and they're like, no one by that name goes here. And they're like, are you sure? And they're like, uh, I mean, they were enrolled in 2018. So yeah, this lady's been telling her parents that she's been in college for this whole time, uh, and she hasn't. And she figured instead of just like pretending she was sick, too sick to go to graduation or something, and printing out like a fake diploma, she decided to get a little more creative with it. Well, she wanted the sympathy, too. Yeah. We're just happy you're alive and safe. We don't care about college. Yeah, who cares about the graduation? Oh, it's fine. You faked going to college for five years. That's This is you know definitely what? one of those, like, this is her Steve Ranazizi moment. Yeah. It's like, yeah, a little fib started turning into a pretty big fib after a while. Yeah. I figured I would be back in college by now, but uh, <laughs> they really don't want me back. And Once you get out of the rhythm, mm. it's it's hard to jump back in, you know? But, I mean, what is, you know, a college education isn't worth what it used to be. So. you got to hand it to the last two headlines, though. Really going above and beyond in the creativity department for coming up with excuses to things that are, you know, not totally average, yeah. but also not totally unheard of. Yeah, excuses that inconvenience um, so many people. Yeah. Yeah, inconvenience <laughs> entire cities. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Just so that they can uh, have an excuse for one little thing. Yeah, an excuse that ultimately didn't end up working because their plan, yeah, obviously, was, their yes. plan was very flawed. <laughs> very bad. Hundreds of pounds of cooked pasta mysteriously dumped in New Jersey woods. Because it's a new cryptid. Yeah. It's the... The, the, the got, sitting spaghetti monster. They got the New Jersey devil and now they got like... Uh, Jersey Tony. He, he lives out in the woods. Almost no one's seen Jersey Tony. Yeah. But he's out there cooking a, a giant pot of pasta in his in his big gourd. He's he, <laughs> And uh, sometimes he comes out of the woods to try to feed the children the pasta. And if you say yes, he puts you in the broth. Uh, so if you escape, yeah. he just tosses all the pasta into the woods. Um, until next time. What's that like insane de- uh, ultra deep forest that's up there? 
The Pine Barrens. Yeah, if you smell marinara in the Pine Barrens, you run. You run. You get yeah. the hell out of there. Don't, it yeah. doesn't matter which direction. That's Jersey Tony, and yeah. he is hungry for uh, the blood of children. Yes. Yeah, if you see, uh, you know, random piles of pasta that seem too big for any normal human pot, that came from Jersey Tony's cauldron. And he is he is on your, on your trail. I love that, like, if I were a detective, the first, even though it's funny, the first thing I would think was that it was a mafia hit. Yeah. <laughs> oh, and they covered the body yeah, with pasta. Yeah, there's a body covered in spaghetti. <laughs> but yeah, Jersey Tony, if, yeah, he's a... Uh... Oh, hello, Mr. Children. Why don't you come and eat hey! the pasta? Hey! I can't wait to hear this episode on last podcast on the left. New cryptid just dropped. Yeah, this, and yeah, scary cryptid. Yeah, very scary. Not only is it Because it actually cryptid. looks scary, and it's yeah. real. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Don't don't go near that spaghetti. It's like that... Uh, I can't remember where it was, but that uh, like sewer blob that also kind of looked like this. It had like little tendrils coming yeah. off of it. Was it one of them fatbergs? Yes, I think it was. Oh, yeah. Those are so gross. Yeah. The Flash production designer says audiences will forget Ezra Miller's crime. <laughs> it's that good. It's that good. I saw the trailer not on purpose. I, I was avoiding the trailer because I try to avoid most trailers. But uh, I went and saw uh, Evil Dead Rise and it played before that. And I was like, yeah, I mean, look, I'm not going to go see it. I'm not going to yeah. probably support it in theaters. Uh, but as a Batman movie, it looks interesting because, yeah, Michael Keaton's right there. And uh, it's got a, what appears to be a Supergirl in it or something. And It does have, like, all the elements that me 20 years ago would be excited about. <laughs> yeah. But I just can't. I just don't fucking care about this cape shit anymore. Yeah, I don't I, care I, about I the movie. Can't, I can't get excited about any of it. I, I, it's probably great. I haven't seen a Marvel movie in like three years. And I, I wasn't even I aware that Guardians had come out. Oh, yeah. I thought that was like summertime or something. It is out now. Yeah. And I used to be so excited for that kind of stuff. And now I'm like, well, I guess I'll see it in like a week or two. And you probably won't see it for months. I'll never see it. Like I said, I haven't seen a Marvel movie in three years. Let me ask you something. It. What was your favorite part of the new Super Mario Brothers movie? I don't know. I haven't seen it. I like I like I liked the part where it leaked on Twitter. Yeah, <laughs> that was the best. You should see Evil Dead Rise though. That no, I want to see that. Yeah, because that's interesting. But make sure you see it before that leaves theaters because it's definitely a whole experience. Oh, uh, just like, being in a, a room. You full said of it was during... full of like giggling teenagers. That sounds awful. Well, that it was. It added. It was funny watching them get really scared and nervously chattering. Uh, but uh, no, go see it with a room full of people on like a Saturday night. It, horror movies are always way more fun when. The whole audience is reacting. I only go to the movies at like 10 a.m. on a Tuesday. <laughs> you and a bunch of other weirdos in there yeah. all watching the movie together. Sometimes I'm completely alone. It's the best. <laughs> and then you get out and you're like, oh. It's... Hey, got a whole day in Gotta front of go me. get some lunch, I guess. <laughs> Popcorn and you're never for... tired. You're never yeah. going to fall asleep. Popcorn for breakfast. And you should see Renfield, too. Oh, yeah. And, and you should all see Renfield, too. Uh, not that the next headline has anything to do with it, but it does. But Renfield, uh, it was such an um, amazing, funny, gory awesome movie that really got slept on way too hard because the budget admittedly was very high for it. I, but, love, uh, I love both of those Nicholases. So yeah, I should probably check that out. It's very good. But speaking of Nicholases, Nicholas Cage's earliest memory is actually being in the womb. I could see faces in the dark and, and vocal vibrations. <laughs> and I, you know, I honestly, he's probably telling the truth. It seems like something that's why he's such a weird guy is he has a full photographic memory of nine months in the womb. Yeah. He's seen some shit and heard some shit and he came out, uh, he's literally built different. And he came from a famous family. What, Coppola? Yeah. yeah uh, Francis Ford Coppola is his uncle. So he probably heard some pretty cool things going around in there. Yeah. Yeah. What was your first memory ever? I don't know. I mean, it was like probably pretty young. I, I was probably like two or something. I, yeah. I can't like pinpoint it, but like I remember like birthdays and like family events yeah. and like i remember like sitting in my grandma's lap stuff I like that i i have like uh very vivid memories of very young birthdays but i also think that's because you've seen like the photos and the videos and yeah stuff. and yeah, i can it's... i can reconstruct it i guess i guess aside from that I, I remember having like a little pedal car thing and going across the floor yeah it's, it's hard to like yeah there is like a lot of false memories just from seeing i remember i, I uh, they had this bubblegum flavored uh medicine that i was taking and I remember chugging the bottle. I was really, really young. I had to be, it had to be before 1980s. Like Pepto-Bismol? It was something. It was before 1988 because it was in my parents' first tiny house. You're the kid that made the fucking child yeah. save shit. Yeah, I... and so I remember them being like, we got to call poison control. Oh my God. It tasted like bubble gum. Yeah, I mean, they got to stop making medicine taste good. 
Medicine should taste terrible. So this was, uh, you know, nearly 40 years ago. Maybe they did stop. I don't know. Yeah. James Corden's Late Late Show was losing up to $20 million a year. It's weird how Hollywood can't find the money for things sometimes. Like yeah. right now when, mm -hmm. when writers are asking for it. But then they'll just uh, let fucking James Corden... Just rack up the bill. Yeah. Also, I didn't know this. He is going. He is going back to England. Oh, good. He's fucking right off. I think he might already be back. Oh well, he. Hopefully, he's there for the coronation. Uh, yeah. They should. They should let him host the coronation. Yes, I think that would be a great <laughs> idea. Him and uh, Pierce Morgan. He should ride in the royal carriage with Charles and do a little uh, carriage karaoke. Yeah. <laughs> Can you sing "God Save the Queen"? But yeah, I didn't. I didn't realize. I guess. He had like one decent season that was profitable and had good ratings, but they've just been treading water for the last few years. And it makes me wonder, like, why didn't they just fucking fire him or replace him? He's so Very unlikable. Yeah. yeah. And it's it, it's because of the carpool karaoke, like hit YouTube stuff. Yeah, I guess. Like, yeah, he had like clips go viral, but the show itself, no one was watching it. And especially the craziest thing is like in the demographics, like the, the 18 to 25 demographic was just like non-existent. Like, yeah. The only people watching this shit were... Old people and boomers. Yeah, it's uh, his show would have gotten a bigger audience if it was on in the middle of the day, because yeah. the it was probably you know women, moms, grandmas watching carpool karaoke. Yeah, being like I wish I could sing with famous people. I wish James Corden was my gay BFF. Um, I'm not gay. Oh, I was just about to question that. I was like, no, is, he's, is he's he? straight. He's married. Remember? Wow. Good for him. Remember, he's married with a child, and there's that story of him oh, yeah, yeah, on yeah. the plane. Uh, yes, 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 you're right. Like, wow, James Corden's such a nice guy. He didn't complain once about the crying baby that the woman next to him was holding. And yeah. then the, the flight ends, and uh, she's like, so are you going to help me at all with your son? <laughs> <laughs> you're right. You're right. Well, hopefully the whole family is going back to England. As is tradition. Yes. Denver residents could earn $1,000 masturbating as part of orgasm advisory job. <laughs> I'm doing my part. Yeah, it's uh, some sex toy company. Mm -hmm. they're, they're looking for people to really, some product testers. We're going to send you some stuff. You try it out. You let us know. Let us know how it goes. And you get $1,000 a year. Yeah. Seems like a win-win for everyone involved. <sighs> yeah. Um, you would assume. there might. I don't know. There, maybe there's a catch here. Maybe, uh, maybe they're going to send you some stuff that's not ready for prime time. Yeah. Well, I'd like to see the waiver that you sign when you agree to this position. Yeah, man. We are I, not liable for uh, death and dismemberment at the hands of our... Okay, what do you... Could be something serious. Yeah. yeah. The hell are you sending me? This, uh, we put AI into a real doll. <laughs> we put Jeez. chat GPT into this real doll. Oh, God. That is coming, like, next month, probably. And Someone's so will half the country. Game. Oh! Yeah. And final headline, not a fun one. Educators outraged after attorneys argue first grade teachers shot in school is workplace injury. It comes with the territory. Yeah, it's, uh, it's you know, it's just part of the hazard of working as a teacher. Um, so I don't know why you're suing us for all this money for uh, one of your kindergarten students shooting you uh, after uh, the administration was repeatedly warned that the kid had a gun. Uh, thus making them culpable. I like I, d When you signed up to be a teacher, obviously you uh, agreed to possibly being shot and are, are paid uh, consummately uh, for that. Uh, There's, <laughs> uh, in, in one of the chapters of a book I'm reading, they talk about how, you know, if you're not a parent or a teacher or a student, like, I mean, it, it, you don't come to the realization of how actually traumatizing it is to be in school now because yeah. you have to do active shooter training constantly, oh, yeah. like fire drills. And so you have this, like, aside from the news that happens every week anyway, this looming idea that this is a very real thing that is that may happen. So yeah. just going to school with that kind of uh, thing on your shoulder is probably not great for the mental health of an entire, I don't know, the past three generations of school children. Yeah, I don't imagine it's uh, it's healthy. And even the teachers who are like, yeah. I have to prepare these literal children in case one of them comes to school yeah. and shoots someone. So anyway, yeah, depending on how this case works out, like if they establish a legal precedent that it is a hazard of the job that you can be shot, and uh, that's just all you qualify for is uh, workers' comp, and you can't, like, sue because it's just a part of the job if that if that is decided uh they're worried rightfully that no one's gonna fucking want to be a teacher yeah because like what's in it for me at this point 
The, what, like, what are the positive aspects of being Same a as it's always been. The pride of educating the next generation of the people who run the country. I mean, that's literally uh, in the, the Bullshit Jobs book by David Graeber. Like, there's a whole part about how, like, uh, the mentality is that people like teachers don't deserve more money because uh, their jobs are actually, like, emotionally and spiritually satisfying, knowing that they're, like, doing good things in the world. And that itself is a reward. Meanwhile, I work for, like, the fucking bank, and uh, this job is bullshit, and so therefore I need money to make myself feel good. Yeah. You don't need money. You feel good because you're actually, like, affecting the world in a positive I, way. I will say everyone <laughs> that I knew, like, from high school or whatever that became a teacher was the nicest person yeah, from you have high to school. Be. <laughs> yeah. You have to be. Literally every person that I know of that is a teacher is the nicest person in the entire world. I couldn't fucking do it. No! I would quit I in would a second. I would lose my mind, yeah. I, yeah, I wouldn't last as a substitute for a day. I would be one of the, well, I, even if I did last, I would be like one of those teachers that everyone's just like scared of because I would just be like angry uh, all the time. Uh, you'd go viral in a second. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, which like, yeah, we, it would work in the 90s Shut today. the fuck up! <laughs> <laughs> ah! I had one teacher do that to us one time. Yeah, Shut yeah, Shut the yeah. fuck up! <laughs> like, it's out of nowhere. Everyone gets and everyone's real like, quiet. holy <laughs> shit. <laughs> we went a little too far. <laughs> yeah, no, uh, yeah. I, I do regret how I did treat some of my teachers. I was a real piece of shit back then. Yeah. Uh, but a lot of them, uh, bless their hearts, got through to me. Yeah. I have met up with them as an adult and oh, told good. them how much I appreciated them actually taking their time with me. That's good. Yeah. Not enough of them. I... I, I some of them are probably dead, but I should probably go say I'm sorry and thank you to many more of them. Yeah. Because the patience that they have for not just me, but everyone else is impressive. And the fact that they could get shot at any time. Yeah, now it, it, it's a looming threat that uh, your hell. life is on the line. So but It's fine. We'll just replace them with uh, veterans. AI. Veterans and AI. Veterans yeah. with nothing better to do than uh, teach subjects they don't know about. And just be at a school. That's a great idea. Anyway, that's our episode. Yeah, hey, hit the like button, even though we kind of ended on a sour note. Yeah, uh, it'll but make you, you still feel liked most of it, didn't you? Much like the career of teaching, it feels good Press to the hit the like up button. And you'll have a little coronation ceremony of your own. Poo, you can be King Charles too. Yeah, and leave a comment if you liked the video or hated it. Yeah, let's you get, can. Let's, uh, let's let you decide. No, leave a nice comment. It's a very positive uh, ecosystem um, down there. Subscribe, obviously, if you yeah. haven't. Uh, if you're feeling extra spendy, press the thank button. Uh, we or also join have join as a member. Uh, if you haven't watched already, we have a whole episode about the constant and ever-growing scandals that are uh, rocking the Supreme Court that aren't shocking to really anyone, and we should probably do something about it. Yeah. And also a video that covers uh, all the basics of the writer strike that's currently taking place in Hollywood. So check out all of that, and we'll see you next week. Bye bye. Bye.